They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It is your boy, the Squirrel. And right now, we're going to dive into some Ken Goodwin. I think if you saw um, some of the pieces I've been putting out lately, uh, Albert's been sending me over some some good old-fashioned kind of comedy stuff. And uh, I'm an old soul. I love that kind of stuff. So I figured I'm going to dive into some of these pieces. We'll put down Ken Goodwin here on the... Uh, on the cards, so if I need to make any notes, I can. And uh, let's get into this um, and start seeing what another good time is all about. Uh, I did, I had this up and on the screen it was like scene selection. So somebody copied this from a DVD and put it up. So I just could play until the screen went black because it's getting ready to start the second segment of the DVD, which is the one we're going to watch. So Ken Goodwin, another good time. You guys ready? Let's do it. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the man we've all been waiting for, the wonderful artist, straight from the London Palladium, and the comedians, ladies and gentlemen, he's here, Ken Goodwin, come on, say Wow. Thank you very much. There we go. <laughs> Settle down now. <laughs> I don't, shut your gob, you. <laughs> that told him, didn't it? <laughs> what about this fella that went to the doctor's and he said, Doctor, I think I'm a bell. He said, Well, go home and lie down for a couple of days. And if there's no change, give us a ring. <laughs> And this Irishman rang up the airport. He said, is that reception? She said, yes, it is. He said, could you tell me how long it would take me to fly to Ireland? She said, just a minute. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> I was talking to the wife the other day. She said, you see that fella over there? Ken? I said, yes, I was just looking at him when you said that. And <laughs> she said, well, he's been out with every woman on this estate except one. I said, who's that, love? She said, I think it's the woman at the corner shop. <laughs> This woman come to our house, she said, I'm collecting for the local swimming bath, so I give her a bucket of water. <laughs> hey, and I was in court the other day as well, you know, and the judge said, what happened? I said, I was cleaning this lady's bedroom windows, and he said, go on. And I said, this lady came in the bedroom with a pair of thingies on, so he said, go on. And I said, <laughs> and I said this fella coming with his watch, it's on, so he said, go on. And um, I said, they were dashing around the bedroom that fast, I couldn't tell what was going on. And he said... Are you going to tell us what happened? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, why don't you know? I said, my ladder broke. <laughs> he said, your ladder broke, how did that happen? I said, well, there were 17 of us on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a much more X-rated version of that joke, but I like that version, that's good. <laughs> the judge was dead, man. <laughs> He said to this fella, I'm sending you down for 15 years. He said, I can't do that. He said, do what you can there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what about this woman that come running out of the bank screaming blue murder? And, um, and this policeman said, what's up? She said, an elephant's just been in and robbed the bank. <laughs> he said, will he recognise it again if you see it? <laughs> she said, no, it had a stocking over it. He said, <laughs> Santa. <laughs> hey, and it's funny, you know, it's funny, because, but, you know, when I, when I go shopping now, and, uh, and I'm not acting daft, you know, and I'm being serious, and, um, and, I, and I walk in, and I, and, I, and I walked into this shoe shop, and I said, a pair of crocodile shoes, please. He said, certainly. What size is your crocodile say? <laughs> Such silly, ridiculous jokes, <laughs> but him laughing at him makes him so much better. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a good time, aren't we? <laughs> you are. Yeah, I have the same trouble getting a suit. You know, I walked into this shop and I said, I want to try that suit on in the window. He said, Well, you can't, you'll have to try it on in the cubicle. <laughs> And I was in this pub, I was in this pub, and this fella came in and he said, a double whiskey drinks all round and have a pint yourself. And the manager said, thanks very much, £5.15. <laughs> he said, I haven't got any money. <laughs> <laughs> he went, smack, get out. <laughs> and don't come back. He said, all right then. 
So the next night he come in again and he said, a double whiskey, drinks all round and nothing for you. <laughs> he said, why? He said, you get nasty when you've had a drink. <laughs> And I saw this fella with a long face, and I talked to anybody made it, I talked back, and I said, horse. I, I said, um, what's up with you? And he said, I'm not going home to our house. I said, aren't you? He said, no. I said, why aren't you going back? He said, there's a terrible smell in our house. <laughs> I said, is there? <laughs> He said, aye, the wife keeps cats. <laughs> I said, well, have you tried opening the window? <laughs> he said, what, let all my pigeons out? <laughs> hey, so and what about, what about this horse that collapsed in Piccadilly? And this policeman was stood there with his notebook ten minutes. And the sergeant said, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> he said, how do you spell Piccadilly? <laughs> He said, um, P I K O. Drag it into Tib Street. <laughs> <laughs> Drag it into Tib Street. This guy's hilarious with his big unibrow. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all have belly ache, won't we? <laughs> And what about the and and this this vi this village idiot joined the army? It wasn't me, but I knew him. And, uh, he joined up and um, and he lost his rifle. And the CO said, "Where is it?" He said, "I've lost it." <laughs> he said, "You'll have to pay for it now." He said, "I'm not paying for it because it's not mine." <laughs> he said, "You'll have to." He said, "Cause anything you get issued within the army, if you lose it, you have to pay for it." He said, "Well." What would happen if I was driving a tank? And I lost that. <laughs> he said, you'd have to pay for it. Uh. He said, it's no wonder these captains go down with the ships, is it? Uh. <laughs> I got my first fan letter today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you get it? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I got a letter from my mum as well. She, she writes to me now and again. I'll just read it to you. My granny sent me one once, you know, but this one's from my mum. It says, Dear Ken. She's not Scotch, cos they say that as well, don't they, Dear Ken? <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Dear Ken. <laughs> my mum says that as well. Dear Ken. Here are a few lines. Then she's written two straight lines underneath there. <laughs> Here are a few lines with the family news. Um, you will be pleased to learn that your father now has a new job with 500 men under him. He is cutting the grass at the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it, eh? <laughs> uh, And your brother John has joined the army and he has only been in a fortnight and they have made him a court-martial Already. <laughs> <laughs> and he is going away for six months to give Her Majesty pleasure. There's <laughs> 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 yeah. And it goes on to say here, um, your father now has started keeping pigs in the backyard. And there is an awful smell yeah. from your loving mother. This is a daft as me, she is. I'm leaning on the lamppost at the corner of the street in case it's her to little lady comes by. Oh, me. Oh, my. I hope the little lady comes by. Now I don't know if she'll get away. Boom, boom, there's no other girl I was waiting for. 
I kind of like Ken Goodwin. He's funny. He's really funny. Um, and he laughs at his own jokes, which makes me laugh even more. The uh, I got a little distracted when he pulled out the banjo ukulele, I'll be honest. If you look back, you probably see me just staring for a second. Um, gosh, I'd never seen a banjo uh, ukulele until about uh, probably five or six, six years ago or so. So I met this uh, these, these two people that I... <sighs> I absolutely adored. Uh, uh, they owned a uh, liquor store. I'm in the liquor industry, and uh, after meeting them and, and working with them for a couple of years, the banjo ukulele showed up on the wall, and uh, the husband had hung it up. And I went in there one day, and I got along really well with the wife, and the husband and I got along okay, but uh, didn't really, never really had that bond. Didn't really click, you know. Uh, her and I talked about all different kinds of stuff, whatever. And we just, we just got along really well. But she also ran the store, so I, I, I was. I, I was uh, in conversation with her a lot more. He was only there occasionally. But I liked him. He was a nice guy. We just didn't really get to know each other that well yet. And I went in there one day, and she wasn't there, and he'd been drinking. And uh, we got talking, and I said, hey, I said, I noticed that thing up on the wall that showed up recently. He goes, that's a banjo ukulele. I was like, really? He's like, hey, you want to hear it play it? I was like, sure. So he takes it off the wall. He sits on the counter where people are going to put their stuff down to pay and proceeds to sing a wonderful slurring rendition of... Somewhere over the rainbow, not the Judy Garland version, but like the uh, the fat Hawaiian guy version, for the lack of a better way to describe it, the the newer Somewhere Over the Rainbow, uh, that's come out over the years. Uh, and he sang that, and he sang it pretty beautifully. He had kind of a gruff voice and this and that, but uh, it came out pretty good. You know, it was uh, it was really cool to see this man, and he he had to be in his late sixties, I think, uh, playing the banjo ukulele for me just for me and singing this song and a couple other customers walked in they just stood with me and, and listened and didn't care that he was sitting on the counter when they needed stuff um and that was a really cool moment for me uh it really was um uh every um and gary were their names and they were great people and um i truly uh felt like they were my friends and uh and i i, I think they were um unfortunately um they uh they both passed away. Uh, I think it's been two, it's been two years now. I think maybe it's just been a year. God, it seems like it's been forever. I think it's been like two. It, it happened uh, right before Christmas. I think in twenty two. Um, and I ended up finding out how they passed, and it's horrible. Um, but they were both found dead in their house, and that's as far as we need to go with that. But that banjo ukulele kind of froze me in time for a second. I was thinking of my old friend Gary, who's not with us anymore, and his and his lovely wife Evie. So. Uh, Evie and Gary, I hope you're looking down on all of us, and I hope you're, uh, I hope you're having a good smile with us. You were really good people, kind-hearted, great souls, and uh, and uh, I miss you guys a lot. But uh, Ken Goodwin, you played that banjo ukulele almost as good as my friend did. Uh, Gary was great. Ken, you were great too. Uh, great little fun song to end this whole thing out. I hope you don't mind my little sad but happy funny story. Uh, and uh, I, I liked Ken. I might look for some more Ken. We'll see. But uh, for now. I'm glad we did them. I hope you guys enjoy this. Albert, thanks again, brother. Much appreciated. You guys be good and take care of yourselves, all right? Scroll up. <laughs>